Okay, let's start. Today we are talking about modern ways of how to store user-defined passwords. We will talk about Shadow Hammer virus and uh, Kaspersky antivirus example that's uh, decoded encrypted hash uh, of MAC addresses, GPU performance that's used for hash cracking, and also we talk about hashing password principles, including salt and key deviation functions. So uh, this presentation I will uh, start from the stories that come from real world when shadow harming virus attacked a lot of computers around the internet but this attack was uh, very uh, sophisticated because this virus has a list of mac addresses that should be attacked so if this virus attacks the common computer it goes away but if it attacks a computer that uh, MAC address in virus list, so virus will infect the computer. Kaspersky Lab decoded the list of encoded MAC address, but they didn't publish it. They just create an utility that should be launched on target machine to answer the question, is your computer affectable to virus or not? This was very unuseful, and I think uh, Kaspersky tried to collect a lot of additional uh, user data for data analysis and other points to improve uh, his client's database. So, originally, um, other researchers also investigated Shadow Hammer uh, virus, and when Kaspersky released uh, his utility with uh, encrypted list of MAC addresses, these researchers. Uh, decompile this utility and uh, decrypt encrypted MAC address and publish it. So, how independent researchers could de decrypt a list of MAC addresses? Researchers, after short investigation, found that Kaspersky utility used a periodic or recursive SHA-256 hash function with 4 bytes salt. So, uh, it looks like we get a MAC address, get salt, calculate hash function, first level, then add additional salt and calculate uh, hash again and again and again and again, for example, 10,000 times or something like this. But it was a bad idea, because a special utility that's called Hashcat could very easily um, decrypt such kind of uh, encryption using modern hardware like GPUs. So, uh, for researchers to decrypt the whole list, it takes about one hour. This is NVIDIA Tesla V100, uh, the most prominent GPU that's used uh, for password cracking and uh, used by Hashcat. Uh, this part of Amazon Web Service P3 16X cluster. So this cluster contains eight NVIDIAs, Tesla V100, and every uh, this GPU has 16 gigabytes. So the parameters of the GPU is 12 nanometers technology, FP32 bits performance uh, index is 5100, FP64 performance bits is 2500. Amazon provides a lot of uh, clusters with different performance and different hardware equipment. All these clusters are based on Intel Xeon E5 CPU that can run up to 2.7 gigahertz. So researchers use P3.16x uh, large clusters that, as I said, contains eight uh, GPUs. Uh, it also contains 64 virtual CPUs, uh, 25 gigabytes network bandwidth for prices. Uh, this table is uh, from Amazon uh, website, and as you see, the cluster P3.16x large, it costs about 24 bucks per hour. So it's very inexpensive, and even a uh, schoolboy 
if he save a bit of money from his breakfast, could rent such kind of server. This is a uh, performance of uh, P3.6 X16 clusters on different operations, for example, for PBDKF2 Schmack uh, SHA256 function, it's performance 200 and uh, 2600 kilo hashes per second. For SHA256, it's uh, five, uh, sorry, 7500 mega hashes. For ChaCha20, that's used uh, for Linux password hashing, is 800. Uh, sorry, 8200. I find an interesting uh, document in GitHub that shows us uh, performance of this uh, cluster on different operations that are created by Hashcat utility. So let's open it because this uh, link allows us to answer some interesting questions. So this is it. Okay. For example, the first question is about Microsoft Office. The question is how different versions of uh, Microsoft Office protect your password for encrypted document or for example how microsoft office became stronger and stronger for protecting user data from version to version okay let's take a look microsoft office 2003 it's uh, 6000 mega hash per second eight uh, uh, nine thousand also in other operation for third operation is eight thousand 10,000. Okay, this was for Office 2003. For Office 2007, it's already only 2,000. So it became four or three times secure than previous version. As for Office 2007, it became only 1,000 kilo hashes per second. That means that Office 2010 is two times secure for password cracking or two times more resist for password cracking than Office 2007. Other question, for example, I need to create an archive that's protected by password, but what archive should I select? What archive is uh, most uh, persistent for password cracking? Are these documents uh, could give some answers to this question. Okay, 7-zip archiver. The speed is uh, 156 kilo hashes per second. WinZip is six, uh, 16,700. So, 7-zip uh, is 100 times more persistent for password uh, cracking than WinZip. So, as for RAR, it's uh, 600. RAR5 is also 600. So, uh, 7-Zip is the winner because it's four times uh, uh, <clears throat> more secure than RAR and 100 times more secure uh, than WinZip. Okay. And the next question is, uh, everybody knows that, uh, for example, SHA-256 is more secure than SHA-512, but how much they secure? How many times one hash is more secure than other one? Okay, this uh, table also allowed to answer this question. Okay, let's find the corresponding string. Django. Not this one. Okay, let's start from this one. It's for 
pbkdf2 hmac so sha1 is 51000 sha 256 is only 21000 so it's more than two times more secure sha 512 is only 6000 so, so it's about three times more secure than sha 256 hmm. as for skype i don't know version but speed is extremely high uh, 231 he hash per second so if you use hash it's very uh, sorry if you use skype it's very good to select large password to create any problems to the person who will probably uh, crack your hash uh, this document is about p3.16 <clears throat> this document is about a bit uh, less performance cluster p2.16 so the main approach when we um, develop in security solution is to have a balance between performance security and usability for example if you prefer, prefer performance it's great problems for security for example for additional asking password or something like this also for probably usability if our focus is usability it could create problems for performance and definitely it create problems for security because nobody wants to add additional passwords and to number from sms to um, way authorization and other but if our focus is security usability is under attack because um, additional defense algorithms and mechanisms requires from users additional activities additional data entry selecting and other points and security solutions is very user unfriendly okay let's talk about password hashing uh, the main points uh, oh, let me check something the main point uh, to protect user hashes from brute force to reveal password is to use cryptographically uh, protected functions. It should be SHA-256, SHA-512, RIPND, and we pull. Uh, no secure hash functions, that's a lot of them, shouldn't be used uh, for password hashing because they could be they had a lot of uh, conflicts on, uh, or collisions during hash creation it could have any other issues the main point when we develop in a password hashing algorithm is to slow down password enumeration especially on hardware that used for password cracking this seriously can traverse with my software development principle uh, that uh, calls uh, create as fast a code as possible, create as fast a solution as possible. In this case, we should uh, create as slow a solution as possible to create problems for enumeration password. So, usually for password cracking, use the following hardware types. The first one is GPU. It's the most dangerous because it's widely distributed. It's cheap enough. After uh, Bitcoin mining, uh, there are a lot of used and inexpensive GPUs. The next one is FPGA. It's a programming micro microprocessors that could be programmed especially for some tasks and could uh, give really good performance. The next one, the next one is AASIC. It's uh, integrated circuits that design it especially for one target operation they cannot be reprogrammable they cannot be changed so if for example you, you create a, a sig for sha 256 it cannot be used for sha uh, to uh, 5012 or oh, sorry 512 because uh, at least uh, these hashes differ in parameters Uh, maybe uh, some ASIC could 
uh, created for target algorithms, but they allow on some algorithms variations like uh, hash lengths, uh, input arguments, something like this. It de depends, but anyway, usually ASIX is created for only for uh, one target uh, algorithms and nothing more. So the main point to uh, cracking password is a dictionary attack. What is it? So we get a user's hash and we get a file which uh, contains all possible passwords, all possible combinations. There are a lot of uh, such files in the internet. We create hashes for every uh, line in this file and compare this with our target hash. So if hashes the same, we crack the password. If hashes different, we go to the next line. The next one is brute force attack. In this case, we uh, enumerate all possible length of passwords with all possible set of symbols. Uh, for the first, we define a set of symbols. Uh, for example, in this example, we use a lot English letters, numbers, and special symbols, and we try and uh, all combinations of those symbols by hashing and compare it with target hash. If we find that two hashes are equal, success. This means we crack the password. So as I already said. The main point for password hashing functions is create as slow as possible to create problems for enumeration, but it could create some issues for your information system because uh, if a lot of users uh, start and enter your, his passwords and logging into the system, it could overload your back end because a lot of hash functions use a large amount of RAM and request many iterations. And for me, the best variant here is to create a something queue pipeline uh, where several uh, hashes, or maybe two or three or something like this, simultaneously calculate it and I'll return it to the identification module to allow user login or not. And if uh, some additional users want to log in, they will put to the queue. This prevents us from unloading of the authentication server and create a reasonable delay for uh, users that need to log in. Also, it creates issues for um, systems that could brute force password. For example, if attack it, uh, we'll send to our identification model a lot amount of uh, large amount of uh, passwords to check. This delay will neglect his activities because, for example, if we allow only one hash per second, it will be very uh, long to enumerate even a small an amount of possible passwords. So uh, our applications usually uses CPU for password hashing. The main properties of CPUs is multi-cores, but less usually than GPUs. Also, it has multi-level hash, level 1, level 2, level 3. The main idea here is to create hashing algorithm that optimize it for CPU, but not for GPU and other hardware that could be used to uh, crack your hash, crack your password. So the main approaches that use it uh, during design of such algorithms is large amount of RAM usage. The other one, read-write operations of small amount of data with random access in small memory regions that fits to level one cache. So in this case, we works uh, only with level one cache, and it's uh, this is very fast is usage of MUL operations. On CPU, MUL executes in the same shifting as uh, add operation, but 
this operation is unavailable on FPGA ASPIC. Also, good to use instruction level parallelism. Use a special set of instructions like SSC2, SSC3, AVX2, and other operations that's a lot of uh, on modern CPUs. So, password hashing algorithm Argon2 uses uh, first, second, and fourth approach. Yes, script password hashing algorithm uses all of these approaches, but only in special mode. So, uh, the problem with password hashing is that uh, someone could uh, create a hash table where all possible combinations of symbols um, correspond to hash. This uh, table could be large enough, but the problem is that it should be created only once. And if someone has a lot of computational resources to create and store this hash, it will uh, it could reveal all possible passwords so to prevent such kind of attack a salt used salt is a random set of symbols that added to the password before it will be hashed after it password with uh, salt uh, hashed and resulting hashed stored in the database near with salt itself so salt is not a secret and this prevent uh, any attacker to create a dictionary with all possible uh, passwords salt as i said is not secret but it should be used only once and it should be random and unique this means we shouldn't use user number as a salt, at least because uh, user name is not uh, long enough. The best variant for salt length is uh, use the same length as hash function length. For example, output of SHA-256 is to 256 bits. Uh, the best variant for salt is use uh, the same length. For passwords, the minimum recommendation password length should be 10 bytes. Uh, as there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of documents in the internet that describes how password should be created, how policies should be uh, for the passwords that. Uh, information systems if we build secure information systems password should follow some policies I found a uh, good documents by OWASP uh, it's internet organization that protect uh, deals with protection of web applications they give some recommendations of uh, how to create password policies for information system this recommendation is available by this link So, as I said before, um, salt should be random, unique, and large enough. So, to create a random salt, a secure pseudo the random number generation should be used. In a lot of platforms, languages, and operation systems, uh, they have their own random uh, number generation, but not all of them are secure uh, or cryptographically protected a cryptographically uh, protected uh, pseudo random number generation guarantees that if attacker got some values it cannot predict what will be in future and he cannot find what was in the past for this generator so uh, i collected a recommended uh, generators for different platforms and different languages for php this is mcrit create av and opel ssl random self device for java it's a secure random from java security uh, for dot net it's a, a rng crypto service provider from system security cryptography for ruby it's secure random function for python it's you random call for pair is much random secure for C++, 
if you use Windows API, it crypt again random function. Uh, for Linux, the best variant is def random or def u random. The difference between these sources is that def random is a truly uh, number generation. That means it's get a ra random number from sources that's pr proved that they are tr uh, truly and not uh, followed any rules or any uh, other dependencies. U random is a pseudo random number generation. That means it's get a seed usually from def random and produce produces a lot of uh, random numbers by algorithms. The problem with def random is that its performance is not enough for modern requests. For example, it could provide only 10 bytes per second or 20 bytes per second, very low performance. But if we seed u random by uh, truly uh, random number that comes from def random, uh, we could uh, generate any uh, numbers uh, of uh, random numbers during per second. So performance of the u random is very high. So the best way to slow down brute force operation is to use a special functions that created for hashing passwords and they called key deviation function. So some examples of such kind of functions here is bcrypt from uh, 1889 script that come from 2008, but it requires massive memory requires PBKDF2 is most prominent in previous years because it takes uh, two parameters, number of iterations and hashing algorithms. And Argon2, it's a winner of uh, password hashing competition between algorithms that was in 2015 and it requires three parameters. Here is a diagram how in generally Argon2 works. So it um, <clears throat> it games the message that should be encrypted or hashed salt and other parameters. So it creates a lot of pipelines that uh, cre create data streams and these data streams are mixed from each other with uh, different parameters and as a result of these parameters we create a hash. Okay, where to get Argon2? Original implementation is available on GitHub. Lipsodium is popular cryptographic library that fork from Natric Lore, also popular cryptographic library, supports Argon2 and this library has bindings to more than 10 programming languages. In Java Springs, uh, Argon2 is also available. Python supports Argon2 and other modern hash function via Passlib library. PHP uh, uh, 5 and more, uh, <clears throat> if version is 5. 0.5.0 or PHP 7 supports Argon2 via password hash function. That net supports Argon2 via conscious security cryptographic library. Library. So the small summary. As I said, password length should be minimum 10 characters long and uh, special symbols uh, should be used like Unicode, emoji, uh, any local symbols for it could be a trouble to create emoji by usual PC keyboard but from mobile it's very easy. Uh, uh, create uh, rules how users cre should create passwords. It's good to use a NIST uh, password guidelines from 2016 that describes what password policy should be used, how often users should change a password, how password lengths should be um, 
as a best variant for uh, pseudo-random generators and password uh, hashing algorithms is used to well-known uh, cryptographic libraries like Lipsodium. And uh, it's required to use cryptographic hash functions like Argon2 with uh, strong parameters. <coughs> to create your hashes uh, crack resistant, it's good to uh, create randomly generated single-use salt and keep tracking for the latest password related industry standard technologies and news. Uh, also, only industrial standard identification solutions for your program uh, systems and information systems should be used. Uh, so that's all. I will glad to answer to your questions. Uh, any questions, please? Anyway, if you have any questions later, you could send it via email or Skype for Business or mm, any other channel. I will do that uh, answer. Uh -huh. uh, firstly, thanks for the presentation. Uh, could you please share uh, the presentation or email or in some different way? Uh, could you please clarify what was wrong with uh, Kaspersky's scheme? Uh, on, it was shown on one of the first uh, slides because uh, it looks like they used salt, right? Uh, so what was wrong here? Uh, the did, main did problem. They, did, yeah, yeah. Did they use uh, some constant salt for all items, or what was wrong here? Uh, wrong here is that they use uh, algorithms uh, that's very easy to crack by uh, modern uh, servers that has a lot of GPUs. Okay. Because this this uh, scheme uh, recursive call of hash function is very easy to crack and if you uh, see uh, okay i understood i understood mm -hmm. so they use it uh sha 256 but as i understand uh you show on, on one on some different slide uh, this function was uh noted as a safe one no uh, no no i understand there are some uh, uh different slide later uh, okay. where you listed uh, the yeah yes uh, yeah and it's listed mm -hmm. here so yes. maybe the, may, maybe if they just used a bad salt so maybe it's the reason just for uh, characters it's not it's not enough here okay 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 let me answer as you see for example mm -hmm. uh, as I said for P PBDKF2 it takes two arguments the first one is number of iterations and the second one is cryptographically hash function you could pro provide here any hash function but you should the best variant is to provide cryptographically protected one for example sha uh, ripmd we pull we should not use hash functions directly we should use a special functions that uses cryptographically protected uh, functions and that's why Kaspersky fails because they used this hash function directly and it didn't help if they cryptographically protected or not. Uh, this in this scheme it will be correct this scheme will be correct in uh, very easy with any uh, SHA function. It's in, it's important. Is it cryptographically protected or not? Mm, I'm sure I understood, but as I understand, there is a hyperlink on this slide, right, with details on uh, this trouble. So I can check later. Anyway, thanks for the clarification. Yes, yes, you could ask by email. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions, please? Uh, if no one else uh, wants to ask more questions, maybe I can ask one more. 
uh, there was another slide with uh, some key deviation or something like that algorithms. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, 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 deviation functions. So, uh, what? So as I understand, these functions just use uh, some kind of hash function as an input, right? Not, not, not all functions. For example, bcrypt and descrypt okay. doesn't use pbdkf2 used. Ah, okay, okay. So bcrypt, descrypt, and argon2 are just uh, behaves as uh, hash functions, right? And uh, pbkdf2 just use another hash function as input, right? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Now, uh, one more question, please. Okay, if you will uh, want to ask me any questions, please send it in by email. This wall. Thank you. Presentation, Thanks, yes, presentation will be in uh, QMS or some other system like TMR. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye.